Hey everybody, today I want to talk about how to choose your perfect destination. Now this is one of my favorite steps in the process and um, I'm recording this as, as lesson 12 I think in the Digital Nomad University, but I might move this up to the beginning just because this part is, uh, it's kind of exciting. So I think it'll, it'll kind of help you to, to, it'll help keep you motivated for the, the parts that are not as exciting. So let's jump into it. How to choose your perfect destination. Uh, first thing I'm gonna give you what you wanna look for. Now what, what you wanna look for is going to be a little different for everybody, but there's some things that, uh, that everybody will have in common, some things that everybody will want to look for, and um, some things that even if it's unique to you, I can still give you a little guidance in, in how to figure that out. Now, uh, important distinction, remember that you're looking for a place to live which is a lot different than looking for a place to vacation. There are some things that, you know, if you have to put up for a week or so, put up with for a week or so, that like small annoyances, right, that, that might exist in a place, um, you might not care for vacation, but if you're gonna live there for three months, it might be a problem. So keep that in mind that you're looking for somewhere longer term. So here are the usual considerations. These are the things that just about everybody cares about. Climate. Right? You want a place that's, that's uh, nice weather. Cost of living, which will depend on what your budget is. Internet and infrastructure. Of course, this is huge if you're a digital nomad, you want internet that works, right? Not everywhere in the world has very well developed internet, so that's definitely something that you wanna look for. A language, you want somewhere that's going to be able to understand your language. A lot of the world speaks English, right? But not everywhere. So it, knowing English will get you pretty far, but some places it's not enough. So uh, we'll, we'll go into that in a little more detail later. And then of course, safety, you know, you don't wanna get robbed, you don't wanna get shot, etc. So that's something to consider. And then special considerations are, are stuff that are, that are unique to you, depending on what your needs are, what your desires are, etc. So hobbies, for example, maybe you like to surf, maybe you like to go camping, maybe you like to go hiking, that sort of thing. Um, some places are gonna be better than others for that kind of thing. Healthcare, if you have particular healthcare needs, then uh, you're gonna have to figure out what healthcare options are available in the destination, the destination that you choose. And um, some countries are, are much better about healthcare than others, so keep that in mind. And then family needs, if you have kids, for example, you want your kids to be cared for, you want somewhere that's child friendly, you want somewhere maybe that has a good daycare, that sort of thing. Okay, now let me tell you where to look for these things. My number one favorite resource by far is a site called nomadlist.com and I'll show you that in just a minute. This is a place that shows you all of the most popular digital nomad destinations and for that matter, a bunch of not popular ones and it rates them based, based on a whole variety of factors. So we'll get into that more in a, in a minute, but uh, nomadlist.com, that's my personal favorite. Tripadvisor.com is good for figuring out things to do, right? If you want, I mean, if you wanna go somewhere and have adventures and have fun, tripadvisor.com will tell you all of the things in town to do, so that's a good resource. Google search, of course, if you wanna search for something in particular that you, that you like to do, so for example, you wanna, you're, you're thinking about moving to a particular city and you wanna know if there's good surfing there. Search that city surfing, right? And it'll come up with a whole bunch of results. Google image search, I really like just to get a feel of what the place looks like. You know, I just search the, the name of the city in Google image search and take a look at the images and think, is this a place that looks like a place that I would wanna live? And then yelp.com is good for restaurants. So if you're a foodie, if you, if you wanna know what kind of dining options are available, then Yelp is good for that. Okay, so now I'm gonna actually walk you through the process that I go through to choose destinations. So step number one is to find good potential destinations on nomadlist.com. Step two, search Google for specifics. Step three, search Google images for an idea of what the place looks like. So that'll look a little bit different for everybody, but I am going to go ahead and walk you through the process that I do. So we'll start with nomadlist.com. So 
Excuse my slow connection here. Okay. So here's a little description at the beginning. Nomad List is a database of 2,113 plus cities in the world analyzing a lot of data points every second to help you choose where to go next. And when you arrive, it connects you to 100,000 plus nomads there. Okay, awesome. So the front page shows all of the cities that are involved in its database ranked by how much digital nomads like them. So the highest rated are first. So Kangu Bali, Indonesia is the number one favorite destination of people on nomadlist.com. And it tells you some of the, some of the most important information it tells you right up front. Okay, so you see um, for this, this number here, this $1,328 per month, that's what they rate is the average cost of living. So cost of living is a big deal and cost of living varies enormously among different places in the world. So uh, for example, you can see this uh, Bali is 1.3 thousand per month. Um, Seoul is 2.4, right? So, so you have almost a factor of two, right? Just, just right there. And I would, I would recommend that you don't use that number. Don't, don't take that number as an exact number. This is their estimate of how long it takes you, of how much it's gonna, gonna cost you to live per month. But there's always a huge range, right? Because there's expensive parts of town, there are cheap parts of town. You could, you could get like a deluxe penthouse or you could live in a hostel, right? So there's an enormous range. You can eat at, um, you can eat at expensive restaurants every night or you can cook yourself at home or you can eat street food, you know? So, so don't take that number. Uh, don't, don't put much meaning on that number, except that it's very good as a means of comparison. So for example, I can say Kangu Bali is a little bit cheaper than Bangkok, Thailand, and a lot cheaper than Seoul, South Korea. That's a fair thing to say. So if I, if I live in a deluxe penthouse in Kangu Bali, then it's gonna be probably cheaper than a deluxe penthouse in Seoul, South Korea, or if I live in a hostel in Kango Valley, it's going to be cheaper than a hostel in Seoul, South Korea, etc. So, um, and then, uh, okay, so then that's the cost of living. That's relative, relatively speaking. Uh, it shows you the weather, right? It says 34 degrees. So I'm American. I don't really use Celsius, so it's a little confusing for me, but, uh, for a point of reference, in my opinion, 25 to 30 or so is, is nice weather. 34 is too hot, in my opinion. Um, Bangkok, Thailand is 38 degrees, so it's super hot there. But that doesn't mean, um, that that's what the temperature is now. So maybe the temperature is nicer in a different part of the year. And uh, I'll go into that a little bit later. But anyway, so temperature is a big consideration. It shows you in every city, what the temperature is right now. Buenos Aires is 24 degrees, so that's a lot nicer. Taipei is 26 degrees, that's perfect. Um, and then it shows you the internet speed up in the top right here. See how it says 20 megabytes per second? Or I think it's megabits per second. Anyway, so that gives you an idea of the quality of the internet. And um, don't, don't discount places that have slower internet. Like Buenos Aires has eight megabits per second. That's, you know, that's, that's pretty weak compared to the U.S., but if you want to work on the on the computer, then that's plenty, honestly. You don't really need to be a lot higher than that. And then, uh, let's see, what else? This Oh, this little guy with the mask down here, that means the air quality is bad. It means there's a lot of pollution. So if that's important to you, then keep that in mind. So you hover over the, um, you hover over the, the tile for that particular city, and it shows you the nomad score. So that's an accumulation of everything that they rank, which is a lot, right? So um, this is number one, so it has a great nomad score. Then it rates the cost of living, it rates the internet, rates the fun, which is subjective, but you know, that's stuff to do in the town, and rates the safety, which are basically the, uh, the biggest things that you're gonna be concerned about apart from weather. And then if you actually click on it, then it's going to bring up a whole bunch of ratings, right? Everything you could think of just about. Internet, air quality, safety, walkability, traffic safety, happiness, 
sure how they get that. I think they just have a bunch of nomads that are rating this for themselves. Free Wi-Fi in city, AC or heating. English speaking, that's probably going to be important for you if you're uh, if you want to get around speaking English. A lot of places don't speak English very well, so you're going to have to learn the native language or get really good at using Google Translate on your phone, one or the other. And then um, freedom of speech, female friendly. Some of these are specific to individual people. Uh, friendly to foreigners, you know, that's a nice thing to have. Some places don't like foreigners so much. Nightlife, healthcare, etc. So uh, weather, yeah, weather is really hot right now. So you can go through the different categories here. Um, these are, okay, these are stuff that like uh, some recommendations that other nomads are giving. So the best taxi app, for example, that's a nice thing to know. The conversion rate of the currency, whether or not you tip, that's helpful to know because a lot of places don't tip. U.S. tips more than pretty much anywhere else in the world. So if you're American, that's a bit of a culture shock. But they don't they don't expect you to tip in a lot of places in the world. In fact, if you tip someone uh, where it's not expected, people will even consider that insulting. So definitely a good thing to know. Co-working space, uh, best coffee place. <laughs> Tourists now, religious government. Hmm, interesting. Best hospital. Safe tap water, oh, that's a very good thing to know. Some places you cannot drink the tap water without, without filtering it first. Uh, cashless society, that's a good thing to know. A lot of places you have to pay cash because they don't take credit cards, etc. So all sorts of wonderful information for you to have. And then uh, cost of living, right? We give you the general cost of living on that front tile, but this gives you more detail. So a one bedroom studio apartment in the center of the city costs 355 a month. That's kind of a culture shock for Americans, right? 355 a month, that's pretty good. You would not find that in an American city. Uh, or cost for a hotel or Airbnb, cost for dinner, cost for beer, etc. So that gives you a nice snapshot of what the cost of living in is in these places. You can go to look at reviews and see what people say about it. Uh, Oh, this person doesn't like it very much, etc. Of course, everybody has different tastes and different opinions, so take that with a grain of salt. Neighborhoods. I haven't actually looked at all that at this part, neighborhoods. No, it doesn't say anything. Anyway, so that gives you a nice snapshot of what Kangoo Valley is like. And then um, when you're looking for, uh, I mean, I like to look at the, some of the most popular destinations because these are the ones that people like the best. Bangkok, Buenos Aires, Seoul, Budapest, Taipei, Berlin. Um, Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam, Sofia, Bulgaria, Lisbon, Portugal. So these are the most popular digital nomad destinations, and these are great places to go if you want to meet other digital nomads, if you want to network, if you want to meet other, other foreigners, these are awesome places. Um, and then, so once you get an idea of what are like the most popular places, then I like to go to add filters. And then um, there's all sorts of things that I can filter for. So say I want somewhere with really cheap cost of living, then I can, I can choose this, I can choose under $1,000 a month. So I get what, Nepal, Vietnam, China, Sri Lanka, China, Vietnam, mostly in Asia here, uh, Natal, Brazil, Salta, Argentina. So if you want, if you want like really cheap, then choose that one. If you want pretty cheap, choose this one. You can choose the uh, the temperature. Um, oh, and this is really helpful. You can choose what what month you want to go there. So. Um, for example, right now is, uh, I'm recording this video in April. So in April, Kangoo Valley is very hot. It's 34 degrees Celsius. So let's say that I'm not planning to move right now, right? I'm planning to move in November. So I can click on November. And then it will tell me, oh, it's 32 degrees in, in November. So <laughs> really not much difference. Um, but some places is it, it is a big difference. So... For example, let's, let's put on December. Um, 
Oh, and it rates them differently too, right? Remember Buenos Aires is really high, but now it's low. Uh, I guess people don't like the heat. 28 degrees Celsius is pretty hot. And, um, you know, Buenos Aires is in the Southern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere has opposite seasons to normal. The Northern Hemisphere, so December is the middle of summer there. But if we go to, uh, let's say we go to July, find Buenos Aires again. Uh, 16 degrees, so a big difference. So you want to find the places that are going to be nice when you get there, not, not at the current moment. So that's helpful for that. And then um, fast internet, safe, near Colombia. I'm in Colombia and it knows I'm in Colombia. That's why it says near Colombia. If you're in the U.S., it'll say near the U.S., etc. cetera. Uh, a lot of nomads, top ranked, clean air, right? There's, you, can, you can filter this for, for almost anything. Top tender, <laughs> Muslim friendly, and then you can filter by region, right? So say you, that you uh, want to go to Latin America. I can just click on Latin America and it shows me all the top tips, all the top cities in Latin America, which actually didn't work. Let me try this again. Pretty sure Berlin is not in Latin America. Okay, there you go. Buenos Aires is, what? It's being weird. Okay, I'll try this again. It acts a little funky sometimes, but usually it works. Okay, there we go. Buenos Aires, number one. Sao Paulo, Brazil, number two. Rio de Janeiro, number three, etc. I don't know what this 121 is. Anyway, this is where I am, Medellin, Colombia. It's very cheap. Internet is could be better. But, I mean, even, even with the low internet score, the internet is good enough. You know, it depends on where you are in the city, etc. But I'm I'm not having any problems where I am. Uh, it's fun, not so safe. That's true. There's a lot of crime here. Um, anyway, so if you want to filter for region, you can do that. You can filter for uh, if you if you need a visa or not. That's helpful. And then these are like the premium filters, so you got to pay extra for the service to use these these filters. But they have just about everything you could possibly ever want to know about a destination. <laughs> whether they have palm trees, whether you, whether you can smoke weed for there and not go to jail, <laughs> um, rural town or city, uh, better for men, better for women, top tinder, good for families, good for retirees, good for Muslims, climate type, good humidity, <laughs> if there's hipsters, okay, not racist. Um, Cheap life, cheap rent, cheap backpacking, etc. So, I mean, I, I won't go through everything here, but there's just about everything you can think of. Uh, entertainment, gambling, nightlife, adult nightlife. I guess that means strip clubs or something. I don't know. Young population, aging population. So everything you could ever think of basically is here. So, um, so let's say uh, let's say you choose a destination that you're interested in. So. Uh, say you want to go to Latin America, you see Buenos Aires, that looks nice, that looks like the kind of place that I want to go. So, you go, take a look through everything in Buenos Aires, and then, uh, and then let's do some, some research off of Nomad List. First thing I would do is, well, if you have some specific hobbies, let's try Googling those. So let's say surfing Buenos Aires. I have no idea if, if they're surfing in Buenos Aires or not. Um, I don't even know if it's, a, if it's on the ocean. Yeah, there it is. You can look at a map that'll tell you a little bit about the geography. Okay, so it's on kind of an inlet. So probably there's not much surfing there, but maybe there's maybe there's surfing out here at Mar del Plata, let's say, which looks like it's not so far away. So I can say I put surfing Buenos Aires, and uh, here we go, the most beautiful surf spots in Argentina, that'll probably tell us. Um, look, number one, Mar del Plata, so that's the one that I just pointed to. Um, so, so you can find information on, uh, on whatever you want, right? Whatever, maybe you like hiking, so hiking Buenos Aires. There you go, top ten best province of Buenos Aires hiking trails. So probably there's not hiking in the city, but there's hiking outside of the city in the more rural areas. Makes sense. 
Okay, so that sounds cool. Now let's uh, let's do an image search. Let's search just Buenos Aires, and then look at some of the pictures. So you can tell it looks like a big city. It looks pretty. Uh, kind of looks like Europe to me. I've never been to into Buenos Aires, so this is just as new for me as it is for you. Assuming you've never been there either. Right. So if you like a big European style city, then probably you would like Buenos Aires, just judging by what I'm seeing here. It's funny, that looks just like the Washington Monument in Washington, D.C. Anyway, and then um, you can search, you might be a little, a little more specific too, so if you want to search uh, beaches, for example. Just search beach. Buenos Aires Beach. So, that's what the beach looks like in Buenos Aires. It looks beautiful from far away. Oh, you can see the mountains in the background too, so if you like mountains, well, now you know there's mountains. Um, it looks decent. Probably not the nicest beach in the world. Probably a little bit cold for a beach city. But anyway, so you get the idea. That's how you can how you can look and get get a feel for what the place is like. So uh, that's my whole process. And of course, if you have other considerations, like you like you want to know about the healthcare, or you want to know about uh, childcare facilities or stuff like that, then you can you can always Google those things too. So uh, that's it. Uh, just a few final thoughts. Number one is you don't really know a place until you've been there, right? You can only tell so much from pictures and from other people's descriptions and from from readings, right? So you can you can get an idea, but you don't know until you've been there. So you know, just do it. And then keep in mind that different people like different things, and the things that other people might like might not be what you like, and in fact, they might be the opposite of what you like. So take that take that in mind. Take other people's opinions with a grain of salt. I wrote in here, some people like to stay in favelas or shanty towns, right? Some people are, are entranced by, by living among poverty and crime. I don't like that at all, so I would never do that. But you just keep in mind that somebody says that this place is great. Well, maybe this is a person who loves poverty and crime, so maybe you shouldn't take their opinion for granted until you read more into it. Um, and then different parts of town can be drastically different. You know, you go to a city, and this is especially true of, of poorer countries, because you can, most poorer countries have absolutely beautiful upscale rich places, which would be awesome to live in. And then 10 minutes down the road is a, a crime-ridden hellhole to, uh, you know, put it euphemistically. Uh, so keep in mind that just because, just because maybe the safety of the overall city isn't that good or the internet isn't all that good, that kind of thing, it doesn't mean that that's true for the whole city. It could be that there are parts of town which are beautiful and perfect for you and you don't ever have to set foot in the parts of town that are not so nice. And then don't get bogged down with planning, right? A lot of people are so nervous about finding the perfect place that they plan and plan and plan and read everything, and they, they waste a whole lot of time and they never actually go there. So um, don't, you know, don't get bogged down. Do some planning, but don't, don't waste uh, hours and hours and hours of your time planning. Find a place that you like and try it, right? And if you end up not liking the place, you can leave. You can just go somewhere else. This is one of the many benefits of being a digital nomad is that you are independent. If you move somewhere and you don't like it so much, you can go somewhere else and you can keep traveling. You, I mean, if you want, uh, another way to do this is just to take, just take short trips, take like trips for a week long, take a, take a tour of Eastern Europe, for example, and go to all of the popular cities in Eastern Europe for a week at, or a few days or a week or something figure out which one you like best, then go back to that one, stay there long term, right? You have so many options because you're a digital nomad. So don't be afraid to go somewhere, just do it. And then uh, if, you, if you like it, you can stay. If you don't like it, you can leave. It's completely up to you. So that's it for, that, for this lesson.
and uh, go give it a try.